Okay, I have started the recording. I also share my screen. Yeah, I hope my screen is visible. Yeah, we'll wait for maybe two more minutes and we'll start at six one. <clears throat> okay, so we'll get started. Um, so, Devana, did you attend last class? Can you hit a like if you attended last class? Okay, so I assume that you are familiar with <clears throat> the material that we covered in last class. So, basically, uh, I'll assume that, you know, given a system of linear equations, you know how to convert this into ax equal to b format you will you will know how to convert this uh, system of linear ax equals b format so this is the precursor to today's lecture i assume that you are familiar with this from this we will get started to some important concepts called row reduced echelon forms row reduced echelon forms so today's class we will see what does it mean to reduce a matrix a to RREF by RREF I mean row reduced echelon form and what is the advantage of reducing a matrix to RREF right so the context is still going to be same the end goal is to solve system of linear equations meaning let's say uh, we give uh, I give you four equations with four unknowns the task is to find assignments to unknowns in the equations that is you need to assign values to x1 x2 x3 x4 such that all four equations are satisfied right now to recap what we saw in last class uh, we saw that you know this uh, uh, four equations can be represented in ax equal to b format once you do so one uh, 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 familiar method uh, to find the correct assignment to x is by inverting a that is you can find x equal a inverse Right. And in last class, we saw why this inverse-based solution is not appreciable. We saw some cases where, you know, like A inverse may not exist. And we saw some computational reasons also. Right. And in general, if you are using some uh, uh, standard libraries to find solutions to system of linear equations, nobody will do this. Right. So, we, so uh, with this inspiration, we will see one elegant way of obtaining the solution x right so now to understand how to obtain uh, the solution using more uh, you know like a, in a more smarter way we need to understand what is rref so today's class we will see how to convert a to rref and in next class we will see how to use rref to obtain x so that is going to be the plan right yeah so first let me begin with uh, uh, introducing what is rref to you 
so rrf is a matrix of the form it is a upper triangular matrix now what do we mean by upper triangular matrix now given a matrix a if you consider the leading diagonal all the leading diagonal entries should be one all the leading diagonals entry should be one and the entries below the leading diagonal should be all zeros see so all entries should be zeros right and entries above the leading diagonal can be anything that is arbitrary maybe let me not use x this can be any any real number I hope the structure of the RREF is clear to you. More formally, we call RREF as the upper triangular matrix. Why do we call this as upper triangular? Because you have entries, non-zero entries, only above the leading diagonal of the matrix. Now you may ask, if A is rectangular, so here I told you I, I am showing A, which is a square matrix. That is the leading diagonal. If you start from top left corner, it is spanning all the way to bottom right corner. Right now, you may ask, what is what if A is rectangular? Rectangular, right? For example, A may be M cross M. Right? Then how will the structure look like? So for for example, for instance, I am showing a matrix A whose height is less compared to width of the matrix. Now, in this case, if I were to draw the leading diagonal, the diagonal will end somewhere here, right? Then, in such a matrix, we call this uh, uh, rectangular matrix as RREF when all the entries along the diagonal are one, all the entries along the diagonal are one, all the entries below the leading diagonal should be zeros, and uh, entries to the right of um, the leading diagonal can be anything that is arbitrary, right? Now, in this class, we will see an algorithm or a procedure to convert any given matrix A into this format. Right? Now, uh, I, I hope this is clear to you. What is the upper triangular matrix and uh, um, what does it mean to convert a matrix to row radius equivalent form? Yeah. So now, so before even uh, you know, like starting, um, I would like to motivate the procedure of obtaining RREF um, intuitively, right? So one thing is, uh, so so always remember that the exercise that we do in this class, last class, and the following class, I mean the next class, is in context of obtaining solutions to system of linear equations. This should always run at the back of your mind. Right? Now, let's try to mimic what all will you do? What all are legal operations in so obtaining solutions to given set of equations? What are the legal operations? For instance, uh, let, let me take an easy system. Uh, yeah, let me go to next. So here, what are, what we are trying to uh, you know like argue are legal operations in obtaining solutions to system of linear equations. Now let's say I give you a system, right? Uh, sorry. Let's say I give you a system x1 plus x2 equals 3 and minus x1 plus x2 equals 1. Now, can somebody tell me what will you do to obtain assignment to x1, x2? Solve it using, I mean, usually how you will solve it. How will you obtain solution to x1, x2? I think this exercise we did in last class. So let me go ahead and do it. First thing you will do is you will make r2 equals r2 plus r1. Right? When you do r2 equals r2 plus r1, 
you will get 0 times x1 plus 2 times x2 equals 4. This will give you that x2 equals 2. Right? Now, what is one operation that is legal? You can take a row, you can take a row R2 and to that row, to that row, you can add or subtract one more row, you can add or subtract the scalar time multiples of other rows. Right? So, what I am saying is, one legal operation, legal operation number one is called as linear combination. The technical term is called linear combination. So, here what I do, you will take some row Ri and to this Ri, you will assign Ri plus some alpha times Rj, where alpha is a real number. Right? So, one thing you notice here, uh, if you are taking a row, if you are taking a row Ri, let's stick to this notation that if you take Ri, the scalar multiple will be attached only to Rj. Why I do this will be clear to you later. So, going forward in the class, we will see something called LU decomposition. LU decomposition. Now, in LU decomposition, it turns out that if you write equations in this format, LU decomposition is relatively simpler. Right? In um, pursuit of solving LU decomposition few classes later, I would like to stick to this notation where if you are adding two rows, the scalar corresponding to that row can be, uh, will always be attached to the uh, other row. Okay. Now, is this a, um, <clears throat> this is not a problem. For example, let's say you are intending to do R, let's say R1 equals 2 times R1 plus R2. Right. This equation also you can represent in this format. You can take this scalar and attach it to the other row. Okay. Now, this is the first kind of operation. I think you are all convinced that this operation is a legal operation. Now, I gave you the system of equation. What is forcing us to write uh, the first equation in the first row? And second equation is the second row. What is forcing us to write? I can swap these uh, rows, right? So what I mean is, uh, I can I could have solved this this system instead, right? I can I could have solved minus x1 plus x2 equals one, and x1 plus x2 equals three. I could have solved this, right? Still, I will get the same solution. For example, when you do R2 equals R2 plus R1, you will again get 2 times x2 equals 4, which is x2 equals 2. This is the same solution that you obtained earlier. Right? And this gives us light that swapping of equations is also a legal operation. Right? Second, uh, second operation, technical term is called a permutation. What do we mean by permutation? Meaning, uh, you obtain the matrix format of a system of linear equations. Let's assume the matrix is, let's say, A, a X equals B. Now, this, uh, this operation says that you can permute any rows of the matrix arbitrarily. Right? For instance, let's say the, ma the matrix A is, let's say, A1 a1 dot. By dot I mean so this first row and uh, uh, the, the column spans this, this way. So I have a, a2, a3 up till an into x equals b1 till bn. Right. Um, now what this is saying is you can permute the rows of the matrix. But mind you that when you permute, when you permute rows of A matrix, you should also permute rows of B matrix. But you should not permute row, uh, rows of X. Should not permute 
rho of x can somebody guess already why we should not permute rho of x okay so let me give you the answer so for example if you take this system right uh, the system of equations that i have given you here uh, this is this the matrix representation of the system you can write it as minus 1 1 and 1 1 x1 x2 equals um 1 comma 3 right b is 1 comma 3 right yeah b is 1 comma 3 now what i'm saying is you can permute rows of the matrix but you are not allowed to permute rows of x right uh so this is a this is x and this is b in permutation you can permute rows of a rows of a is valid you can permute rows of b sorry not can you should permute rows of b in the same order that you permute a but you cannot permute rows of x you should not permute now let's see what will happen if you permute rows of x also so let, so let's assume the order is 1 2 that is you have first row and you have second row here now if you permute the rows so that you get the order as 2 comma 1 then uh, what will happen uh, matrix a will become 1 1 -1 1 let's say you permute x then if you permute x what will happen x2 x1 will become x2 and x2 will become x1 equals 1 3 right now do you see what's the problem when i permute x can somebody tell me what what's the issue here
हेलो हेलो हाय सॉरी आई आई डिड नॉट रियलाइज माय इंटरनेट वाज ऑफ या आई केप टॉकिंग एंड या आई डिड नॉट रियलाइज दैट या सो कैन पीपी हियर मी नाउ लाउड इज इट आप audible okay okay yeah so what i was saying is uh, i am in hostel connected to wifi uh, while i was talking i think some point in time the internet went off i did not realize and i kept talking so uh, so until when uh, was my voice audible to you guys so until uh, until when did you hear me were you able to hear me हेलो विक्रांत हमें ऑडियो बोली ओ यू जस्ट जॉइन ओके सो देन आ ओके सो ओके मे बी फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ क्लास आई विल आई विल काइंड ऑफ रिआइट राइट व्हाट आई व्हाट आर आई हैविंग सेइंग सो व्हाट आई सेड वाज सो सो इन दिस क्लास वी विल सी एन एलिगेंट वे टू अप्रोच So, uh, uh, solution to a system of linear equations, right? Now, here uh, we are given an example with four equations and four unknowns. Now, last class we saw how to represent the system of linear equation in a matrix format. What we did, we put the coefficients of the unknowns in the matrix A in the order that we have in X, right? So, we fix the order in X, and in that order we fill the coefficients in the matrix A. Then we take all the constants to the right hand side and then fill the matrix b i hope you recall uh, this is what we did in the last class and last class we saw that typically we can so obtain solution to x by a inverse b and we saw some drawbacks last year so, sorry last class why is a inverse b not appreciable solution right now last class we saw okay this is not a good good way to obtain solution now we are going to see elegant way to obtain solution that is called as that is obtained when you reduce ea to something called low reduced echelon form so i started the class by saying what is low reduced echelon form so here we consider a example where we are given a matrix a that is square that is n cross n given a n cross n matrix RREF by RREF I mean row reduced echelon form. So RREF has this structure. So, so first what you do is to draw a leading diagonal. That is from left to right you draw the diagonal. Now we say that matrix A is RREF if the entries along the leading diagonal are ones. Entries along the leading diagonal. Yeah. Oh yeah 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 yeah. I did not share the screen. Yeah. sorry sorry about this okay, can you see it now ah okay so sorry, sorry for the mess up yeah okay so so were people able to follow me what by what i mean by uh, rref form so we call a matrix a in rref when the leading diagonal entries along the leading diagonals are one entries below the leading diagonal is zero and above the leading diagonal can be any real number okay so this is the story when a is a square matrix now what will happen if a is a rectangular matrix if a is a rectangular matrix the leading diagonal will not span all the way till bottom right corner of the matrix right if you draw the leading diagonal it may stop somewhere in the middle right but still our definition of rref is consistent in the sense the entries along the leading diagonal should be 1 entries below the leading diagonal should be 0 entries to the right of leading diagonal should be any arbitrary real number which means this portion the portion i am sharing in the in purple this entire portion can be any arbitrary real number but the po the portion that i am sharing in uh, uh, red here this should be all zeros okay so i hope the structure of rref is clear right now next uh, i uh, next we, uh, we were uh, discussing how to convert a given matrix into a row reduced echelon form meaning how to convert a given arbitrary matrix into 
into a form where uh, leading diagonals ha have ones and uh, uh, basically i think you get the point right now uh, further i told that technical term to this matrix is called the upper triangular matrix upper triangular matrix what do i mean by upper triangular matrix um the entries only above the diagonal uh, only above the uh, i mean entries on or above the diagonal should be non zero right or rather entries below the leading diagonal should be all zero that is when you call a matrix to be upper triangular matrix right now uh, i said you know like i could have given you the procedure to obtain a to r r e f right the procedure is in fact very simple but uh, i would i would not like to give you the formula to obtain uh, the r r e f matrix rather i would like to motivate the steps of r r e f by drawing inspiration from what you would do in uh, you know if i give you a question and ask you to solve it in paper what will you do to achieve uh, attain the solution of system right you will do some steps now th those steps we will formalize and from those steps we will inspire the procedure to obtain uh, uh, to procedure to reduce a matrix to r r e f right now for that we need some something called legal operations i call this as legal operations now what are legal operations now i give you a system of linear equations and ask you to solve it in paper now whatever you do to obtain the right solution is a legal operation right now for for example take this system x1 plus x2 equals 3 minus x1 plus x2 equals 1 now to obtain solution to this system one possible step that you will do is you will add r1 to r2 why will you do that because when you do when you do so one variable one variable gets eliminated right because x1 minus x1 is 0 this variable will get eliminated as a result you will get one equation with one unknown and we know how to solve one equation with one unknown so when you do r1 r2 plus r1 you get 2x2 equals 4 from this you get x2 equals 2 right now from this operation that you do on paper i am formalizing linear combination so sorry uh, uh yeah a linear combination is any operation of the form ri equals ri plus alpha times rj alpha is a scalar by scalar i mean a real number right you can do any such operation on a matrix and that is a legal operation why because um in in obtaining solution this you know x2 equals 2 and uh, x1 equal to something you can add any number of rows with uh, any arbitrary scalar of course uh, uh, alpha Uh, yeah alpha can be zero also if alpha is zero basically ri will be equal to ri right i hope this linear combination is clear is there, is there any doubt with the linear combination operation later we will see how to uh, apply this linear combination in a matrix format okay i assume this is clear now uh, one one may wonder why am i saying that you know ri equals alpha uh, ri plus alpha j why can't i simply uh, instead why can't i do ri equals some alpha times ri plus rj so this is also a legal operation this is also a legal operation only okay but uh, uh, i uh, request you not to do this why because in future we will see something called lu decomposition and lu decomposition if you restrict yourself to yourself to equations of this format ri plus alpha times rj it turns out that uh, obtaining solution to lu decomposition is simpler right in uh, in view of the future class i uh, i i only consider operations of the type ri equals ri plus alpha times rj right now second operation we are seeing is permutation so uh, um, uh, was i uh, still audible when i introduced permutation or should i start permutation from beginning okay okay sure 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 yeah okay i'll start permutation from beginning so now um permutation right so now you are given a system of linear equations so let's let me take this system minus 1 1 1 1 x1 x2 1 Minus one 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 x one x two equals one three. This is the system I have. What are the equations corresponding to the system? Minus x one plus x two equals one. 
yes and x1 plus x2 equals 3 right now will the solution i obtain be any different if i permute the rows meaning if i consider system in this order x1 plus x2 equals 3 minus x1 plus x2 equals 1 if i consider this system where the rows are interchanged will the solution that i obtain be any different no right so in this system also let's say i do r2 equals r2 plus r1 then i will get 0 times x1 plus 2x2 equals 4 and x2 equals 2 this is consistent with what you obtained earlier right so that is why um, permutation is also a legal operation in obtaining solution to system of linear equations here i would like to stress one point that you know yeah so let's so let, let's assume this to be the original matrix that is a x equals b a x equal to b now if you swap the rows one and two in this uh, in this system then you should not swap x meaning after swapping your matrix will be one one minus one one a will get swapped b will also get swapped 3 1 but you should not swap x x will still be x1 x2 yeah x will uh, the matrix the vector x will still be x1 x2 do you see why Can somebody answer why I should not swap x1, x2? So, in this matrix, actually, um, R1 and R2 are interchanged, and in this matrix again, R1 and R2 are interchanged. What will happen? Let's say, uh, let's say I make this uh, x2, x1. Can somebody find the fault? Can somebody say me what is wrong in this? Uh, am I still there? Or? Uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, is, is, is somebody able to fault the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, notice a fault in changing, uh, I mean, permitting X also? exactly so how how is the equation change then if i multiply a into x what will happen i'll get x2 plus x1 equals to 1 sorry x2 plus x1 equal to 3 minus x2 plus x1 equals 1 now if you, if you solve the system in a situation where you have swapped rows of x also then you will get 2x1 equals 4 from this you will get x1 equal to 2 x1 equal to 2 right but in the original system x2 equals 2 not x1 equals 2 do you see the mistake yeah so you should not swap row sockets so yeah let me formalize this so permutation is a legal operation but your permutation should be only limited to only limited to a and b in same order this is very important okay you should permit in the same order now we have seen uh, you know two operations one is where i call the linear combination other i call the permutation now third operation is a scalar multiplication i think this is very simple what do you mean by scalar multiplication again let me take the system minus x1 plus x2 equals 1 x1 plus x2 equals Three. right now i can multiply both the equations by two for example let's say i multiply by two this i multiply by three then what will happen the resultant system will be minus 2x1 plus 2x2 equals 1 3x1 plus x 3x2 equals 9 right 
now i can do uh, now to to obtain solution what i can do and uh, I'm, i'm beating around the bush but uh, maybe to make you understand you know that this also legal operation let me go ahead and do that right i can do r2 equals r uh, r2 r2 plus plus 3 by 2 r1 right what will happen if i do that i'll get 2x1 plus uh, when i multiply by 3 by 2 i'll get 9 by 2x2 equals 27 by 2 right now i can uh, add you know like uh, uh, add r1 and r2 then what will happen x1 uh, this this x1 will get cancelled then what i will get is uh, 2 plus 9 by 2 what is 2 plus 9 by 2 Two plus nine by two will be thirteen uh, by two. Thirteen by two x two equals twenty. Is it twenty seven or twenty six? Yeah, twenty seven. Um, yeah, I think I'm making mistake somewhere. No. Ah, right, right, right. This should also be two. This should also be two. Then, ah, uh, then. Uh, this will be twenty-seven by two. So two plus twenty-seven by two will be uh, four. Oh, still it is wrong. I am making mistake somewhere. I think I should get here twenty-six by two or something for x two to be equal to two. Yeah, let me just check. So, if I multiply this with two, I'll get minus two x one plus two x two equals two. When I multiply this with three, I get three x one plus three x two equals nine. Now, if I yeah, then if I add these two together, uh, ah, right here is the mistake. Three x one minus two uh, x one. Okay, I'm adding three by two uh, r one. So when I add three by two r one, oh yeah yeah yeah, the mistake is this should be two by three r one. Do you see the mistake? It should be two by three R one. Then this three and this three will get cancelled. I'll get two here, right? If I multiply two by three R one, basically I'll get two X one here, and this three and this three will get cancelled. Then I'll get two X two. Then two by three will be this. This will be six. Okay. So let me let me rewrite this. So what I'm doing, I'm multiplying R2 equals R2 plus. Oh, one second. Sorry, I'm getting confused. Just one second. So R2 equals R2 plus. Hmm, yeah, three by two is correct. Three by two R1 and plus is correct. Yeah. So when I multiply, um, when I multiply R1 to three by two, so this will be minus three x1. So this will be zero times x1. And three uh, by two will be three x two. This will be six times x two. Yeah, six times x two equals when I multiply three by two, I'll get twelve. Yeah, now I get the equation. So six x two will be equal to twelve. Then x two will be equal to two. Now do you see? I can multiply you know equations with any arbitrary scalar, but that scalar should not be equal to zero. You should not multiply with a zero scalar, but you can multiply with any positive or negative number. Still, the system of linear equation will be consistent. By consistent, I mean you get the same solution. Is it okay? Yeah. Now let us see. So basically, uh, uh, we have seen three operations. One is called linear combination. Second is called permutation. And third is called scalar multiplication. Now I'll show you that for any given matrix, these three operations are enough to convert any A, be it square or rectangular, to RREF. Right? Now let's take a let's take the matrix in the uh, above system. Let's take a difficult uh, difficult example now. Let me bring this image. Uh, 
yeah let, let me copy this image uh, down Now let's consider the system of equations here. Let us consider the system of equations here. Uh, can, can somebody read out AX equal to B here? So, uh, okay, let me start with, let me not start with AX equal to B. Last class we saw an augmented matrix, right? A comma B. Let me write down the augmented matrix for the system. Right? Augmented matrix will be 1, 1, 2, minus 1. And uh, let me augment B also. So this will be 1. Then for second equation, minus 2, minus 2, minus 3, 5, B will be 0. Third equation, 1, 1, 3, 2, B is 3. Last equation, 0, 0, 1, 3, B is 6. Right. Now remember the uh, format of RRES. So let me draw the diagonal here. So uh, diagonal is basically diagonal ends here which means our target is to make the purple entries the purple entries equal to 1 or 0 so basically uh, we'll try our best to make uh, the entry as 1 there may be some cases where you cannot make an entry you cannot really make an entry as 1 in that case you just uh, uh, give up and you make a, you make that entry 0 okay our target is to make the purple entries 1 and uh, the red entry is 0. And how will you make it? We will make only using the three operations that we discussed so far. Right? Now, firstly, you see this is not an RRES. Why? Because, yeah, like, okay, now let me give you the procedure. So, the way you will uh, proceed uh, to, uh, to, the way we will adjust the entries in basically is basically in this order. You will start with first column. You will make, you will try to make the first entry in the first column 1. All the entries below row 1, you will make 0. Once you are done with first column, then you will go to second column. In second column, as you are, as you are aware, that any entry, any number in this uh, entry is fine. So, you will not bother about this entry. You will come to second entry of the second column. You will try to make this entry 1. Right? If it is, if it is, if it so happens that uh, you cannot really make this entry as 1, then you will try to make it 0. Right. You, once you make this uh, a second entry of second column 1 or 0, then you will make all the entries below the second, uh, uh, all the entries in the column 2, below the entry 2, this you will make to 0. Then you will come to third column, you will make the entry 1 and the entries below uh, the pivot entry, you will make it 0. Right. Now, this is the procedure we are going to follow. Right. Now, following this procedure, you see already that in the entry 1 of the first column, the condition is already satisfied. Right? Because the condition is satisfied, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the other entries below, below the first entry. Right? Can somebody suggest uh, operations, uh, uh, can somebody suggest a right operation to make this entry 0? So now I want to make this minus 2 to 0. Can somebody suggest an operation? So remember that you can only use three operations. One is linear combination, other is permutation, third one is scalar multiplication. Anyone? Right, R2 equals, that's right, R2 equals 2 times R1 plus R2. So, this is correct, but I request you to stick to the notation in this format. Ri should be equal to Ri plus alpha times Rj. Let's always follow this notation. Right? I'm, I'm, uh, again, I'm, uh, again, I'm repeating this only because to make uh, LU decomposition easy later. Okay, so your equation is perfectly correct, but I will, I would like to rearrange in this format. R2 equals r2 plus 2 times r1 okay once i do that what will happen i will obtain the matrix 
Now when you multiply R2 equals R2 plus 2 R1, you will get 0. Uh, R2 plus 2 times R1 will be, uh, this will be again 0. Then this will be minus 3 plus 4, right? Which will be 1. Uh, please alert me if I am doing some calculation mistake. Uh, then it will be 5 minus 2, which is 3. And this will be 0 plus which is 2. And I will simply copy over the remaining rows, which is 1, 1, 3, 2, 3, 1, 1, 3, 2, 3, and last row is 0, 0, 1, 3, 6, 0, 0, 1, 3, 6, right? How did you obtain this uh, matrix? We obtained by applying the operation R2 equals R2 plus 2 times R1, right? Now, following our uh, pseudo code, I mean, following our uh, procedure, next we want to target this entry. We want to make this entry 0. Can somebody suggest an operation? Yeah, R3 equals R3 minus R1, right? R3 minus R1, R2 for to stick to this notation, I can write R3 equals R3 plus minus 1 times R1. Okay, so I, I always want the uh, equation to be in this form r3 ri equals ri plus some alpha times rj okay so here alpha equals minus 1 now when you do that let me update in the same matrix so when i when i do r3 equals r3 minus r1 so this entry will become 0 this entry will become 0 this entry will again become 0 uh, 3 minus 2 will be 2 2 minus uh, 2 plus 1 will be 3 3 minus 1 will be 2 Right. Now we see that uh, this entry already condition is satisfied. Right. Now what we can do is to proceed to the second entry of the second column. Because this uh, first entry lies above the leading diagonal, this entry we don't care, whatever it is. Right. We come to second entry of second column. Now, here we see we our expectation is that we need to make this entry equals 1. Right. But I find a 0 here. Now, can you suggest uh, uh, suggest one of the three operations using which you can make this entry to 1? Is it possible to obtain a 1 here using the three operations that I uh, told you earlier? Okay, let's try one by one. Uh, at this uh, thing, if I do a linear combination, will I ever get uh, 1 here? Is there a linear combination that will give me 1 here? Exactly, exactly. So you can do R2 equals r2 plus r1 right you can do this right so is everybody able to see if i do r2 equals r2 plus r1 i'll get a one here but if you do this r2 if you do r2 equals r2 plus r1 what will happen the entry that you made zero also gets disturbed right if you make r2 equals r2 plus r1 you're right in saying that this entry will become one this entry will become 1, but also you are making other entry 1. Right? But in our, uh, uh, in our RRES, this is not at all okay. It is a strict condition that the entries below the leading diagonal should be 0. And entries on the leading diagonal should be 1. But if you are not able to get a 1, it is okay to leave it as 0. This is a okay condition. But this is a strict condition. Right? In pursuit of making this entry 1, you are, you are disturbing a 0 already. 0 that we, that we produced already. Right? 
that is why when you encounter a column when you encounter a when you encounter an entry that you cannot make it to one you will just leave it as it is right this entry cannot be made one so this entry you leave it to one so you you leave it to zero and you will go to next entry now you see next entry is already zero so this, we are also done here then we are we are also done here right now we will move ahead to third entry of the third column So I think uh, all of you uh, to I, I hope it is clear to all of you that why I should not do R two equals R two plus R one. Right now, now okay. I think it is clear. So now let's move to third entry of the third column. Can somebody suggest an operation? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Yes, R three equals R three equals R three minus R one, right? Again, observe when you do R three equals R three minus R one, this entry will become minus one. Do you see what I mean? This entry will become minus one, but we don't want that because we this entry, uh, as per our definition of for our area, this entry should be zero only. Then when you are doing an operation, we better not disturb something that we have already fixed. All right? Is there any other way I can make this one? Oh, we need to make this entry one, right? On the diagonal, it should be one. So you are saying R three equals R three minus minus two times R two, is it? Yeah. Can I suggest a even simpler operation? We saw scalar multiplication, right? Can I simply do R three equals R three by two? Or Uh, I'm I'm multiplying a scalar to R three. R three equals one by two times R three. Can I do that? So these are the three these are the three conditions that we saw, right? One is linear combination. Second is permutation. Third is scalar multiplication. I can do scalar multiplication, right? so why i am saying that any time you find a entry that you want to make it one you can blindly follow this rule if that entry is not zero you can always make it into a one by multiplying that entire row with a reciprocal of that entry right now let me follow that let me follow that uh, you know like blind rule and make r3 equals r3 by 2 What will happen if I make R three equals R three by two? Here I will get a one. Here I will get a one. This will become three by two. So three by two, and this will become one again. Okay. So now I am done with third entry of third column. I should go to this this entry, and I want to make it zero. Can I suggest an operation that will make this zero? R three exactly. R four equals R four minus R three, and when you do that, this entry will become zero. This entry will become zero. Three minus three by two will become um, three minus three by two will become a three by two, right? And six minus one will become five. Okay. Is it okay? Yeah. 
yes yes you can do r4 minus r2 that's a very very valid operation and you can do that only because this entry is zero here we are fortunate that this entry is zero now what would have happened if this entry were non zero then you will unnecessarily disturb this zero this zero will become non zero again right now just because the pivot the, the second entry of second column happened to be zero you can also do r4 equals r4 minus some some scalar multiplication times r2 that is also perfectly valid okay now we are done we came to the last entry now can somebody suggest how to make this last entry one r4 equals yes r4 equals 2 by 3 times r4 right if you do that then this entry will become 1 this entry will become 1 and this entry will become 10 by 10 this entry will become 10 by 10 right now we are done so i i hope the uh, algorithm is clear how to convert a matrix to a already cyclic form Is it clear? Now, I think I demonstrated uh, two of the three operations. That is, uh, uh, I, uh, in, in obtaining RREF, I showed you how to apply linear combination, how to apply scalar multiplication. Let us see when will you apply permutation. Right? Now, let me give you, you know, like some arbitrary matrix A. A equals, let's say, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 0, 5, 3. 0, 1, 2, 4, 0, 0, uh, 3, 2. And can, can you uh, suggest uh, this RRAF conversion uh, procedure uh, for this matrix? First, what you will do? You look at the first entry of the first column. You will try to make it 1. In this case, it is already 1. So, you will go to the entries below the first entry. Entries below, uh, entries below this one. Right? And you will want to make all such entries to zero. Now in this matrix, they are already zero, so you are done with first column. Then what you will do, you will go to the second entry of the second column, this entry, and you want to make this entry one. But this entry is unfortunately zero, right? Now what is the condition? You will try to, you will try your best to make this entry one. If in case if you are not able to make this entry one, then you will leave it to zero, right? Now here. Can you make this entry 1? So, while making this entry 1, you should not disturb the other entries that you have already attended. Yeah, what can you do? R2 plus R3. Yes, you can do this. But rather, I let, let me suggest a simpler operation. Can I permute uh, A? A is in the order, let's say 1, 2, 3, 4. Right. And we already saw permutation is also a legal operation. Now, if I write A in the order 1, 3, 2, 4, then what will I get? 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 1, 0, 0, 3, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 2. Now, do you see here already we got a pivot here. Sorry, already we got the second entry 1. And by means of applying this permutation, I get these entries for 3. Right? We could have also done what, what you suggested. We could have done R2 equals R2 plus R3. Then what will happen? This entry will be 1. Then I again I have to come here and I should adjust this entry to 0. Right? There is nothing wrong in doing that. That, is also, that will also give you perfectly correct answer. But here I am suggesting, you know, like one other legal operation. We saw that permutation is also a legal operation. Right? Yeah. Then, uh, so you obtained uh, this, then you will go to third entry of the third column. You will try to make this one. And here we saw that you will use scalar multiplication to make this one. So you basically you will do R3 equals R3 by 5. That will give you one here. And this will become 3 by 5. Then you will try to make R4 0 by multiplying with the third row. Huh. So this is one case where uh, uh, um, R3 equals R, sorry, uh, if you want to make this entry to 0, you can, you should not do R4 equals 
R4 minus 3 by 2 R2. You should not do this. Why you should not do this? Because if you apply this equation, this entry will become 0. But this entry will get disturbed. Right? A correct operation here will be to multiply R4 equals R4 minus 3 by 5 times R3. Are people able to follow what I mean? What I mean here? You should be careful in terms of selecting the rows when applying linear combination. So that whatever the work you did earlier does not get ruined. Okay. Is there any doubt so far? Yeah. So uh, then I assume that, you know, like uh, if I give you any matrix, uh, you will be able to convert it into row reduced cyclon form. Right. There is no doubt in apply, applying these three operations, right? Or do you want me to quickly revise before we end the session? Okay. So uh, we started with uh, we started with this class with uh, you know uh, 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 class with how to find uh, is there an efficient method to find a solution to system of linear equations solution to system of linear equations a system of linear equation is a, a, a can be written in matrix format in this manner a x equal to b and last class we saw how to take augmented matrix what we do is to append b to a that will give me augmented matrix right now uh, it turns out so in next class we will see how to you exploit rrf to find solution efficiently but this class let's only worry about the algorithm or the pseudocode that gives us rrf given a matrix a right now the goal is to convert a comma b to rho reduced echelon form now what is rho reduced echelon form given any arbitrary matrix b let a comma b let's say it's a square matrix or a rectangular matrix it doesn't matter what you will do is to draw the leading diagonal now you will try to make the entries along the leading diagonal equal to one you will try to make that in case you are not able to make this entry one it's okay to leave some of these entries as zeros right but if you can make one you should definitely make one right that is the condition on the leading diagonal. Next condition is the entries below the leading diagonal should be zero. And the entries above the leading diagonal can be anything that we don't care. This is the structure of row reduced echelon form. Next, we saw, we saw how, do, how to convert uh, this matrix to row reduced echelon form. Now for that, we need to come up with some set of legal operations. Right? Now, these legal operations should be inspired from whatever you do to solve system of equations in a paper. If I give you a paper and give you, let's say, three equations with three unknowns, what all will you do to obtain the solution X? These operations should be inspired from that the, the operations that you apply in paper. Right? And we saw that, the, that you predominantly or you only apply three operations, three such operations. So these three operations are called as elementary row operations. Elementary row operations. Now what are those operations? First we saw linear combination. What is a linear combination? It is an operation of the form Ri equals Ri plus alpha times Rj. Now mind you, I told that you should always represent linear combination in plus alpha times rj format only right while it is perfectly legal to write ri equals alpha times ri ri plus rj this also a valid operation but in this class we will restrict to operations of only this type and this time this this these are correct there's nothing wrong but we'll try to avoid this kind of operation why will we avoid because later we'll see something called lu decomposition LU decomposition. Now, if you obtain RREF following only such operations, then LU decomposition is straightforward. Right? That is why I restrict to equations of the form RI plus alpha times RJ. Okay? 
then second operation that we saw was permutation what is permutation now given matrix a x equal to b or the matrix uh, augmented matrix a b right you can interchange the rows of the matrix in any any which way you want you can interchange the rows right and one more thing i told you in a x equal to b you should not interchange the rows of x do not interchange the rows of x and we saw why we should not interchange right so we saw if you interchange the solution gets back meaning earlier x x2 was equal to 2 after you interchange x1 will become equal to 2 and we don't want that right by in permutation you will only permute the rows of a and rows of b in the same order what do i mean by same order let's say you swap rows 2 and 1 then you swap the same rows in b also okay this is a permutation operation then at last we had scalar multiplication what is scalar multiplication ri equals alpha times ri and alpha should not be equal to 0 okay now given a matrix you will apply one or many of these oper operations in a sequence to obtain A matrix in this structure, right? Now, what is the pseudo code uh, for a procedure you will follow? Now, given a matrix, first you will visit first entry of first column. So, even before that, let us draw the diagonal. Let us draw the diagonal. Let us assume diagonal ends here. Then, what you will do? You will visit the first entry in this diagonal, right? You will try to make this entry. now if this entry is non zero let's assume you had a 2 or 3 here you can readily apply scalar multiplication right to make the entries on the leading diagonal one i can apply scalar multiplication let's say this entry is some 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 uh, some beta this entry is beta you can multiply r1 equals 1 by beta times r1 if beta is not equal to 0 right if beta is equal to 0 you will try to permute some rows to make this entry non zero once this entry is non zero you can make it equal to 1 right so what i say what i'm saying is if a entry on the leading diagonal for instance if the entry beta if beta is equal to 0 you will try to permute permute rows okay now first you will try to make this entry equal to 1 once you have made this entry 1 you will try to make all the entries below the uh, this uh, below below this beta 2 equal to 0 now how will you make this uh, uh, entry 0 you will use some linear combination now one thing you should be careful when applying linear combination is you should not uh, you should not disturb you should never disturb the adjacent entries that is a thumb rule you should follow right you should never disturb adjacent entries right what do you mean by adjacent entries let's say you are in this this entry when you came to this entry you have made sure that entries above this entry entries on the leading line above this entry are equal to 1 or 0 and you have made sure that this part of the matrix is all zero right when you apply some operation to make this entry 1 or let's say to make this entry 0 to make this entry 0 in applying linear combination scalar multiplication or permutation any which operation you apply the work that you have done is basically this part this part you have adjusted when, when you came to adjust this entry this part you have already adjusted and this part you have already adjusted right you should not disturb the entries that are already adjusted okay you will uh, you will keep this as a constraint in adjusting entries right now in this manner what you will do you will use the three operation sequentially and uh, um, 
obtain a matrix where diagonal is either 1 or 0 and the elements below the diagonal are all zeros. That will give you row radius cyclone format. In next class, we will see how to use RREF to obtain solution to X. Is it okay? Is there any doubt so far? Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll conclude the class. Uh, so before next class, I request you to you know take at least two problems and convert uh, that problem into RREF yourself. Friday, 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 6 to 7 p.m. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, it will be better for you if you take a matrix and, uh, you know, apply the steps that we discussed today to convert it into RREF right now. Yeah. So, then, then I think uh, with this, uh, with the next class, we'll be done with sol solution to system of linear equations. After next class, we'll see LU decomposition. Okay. So this will cover at least 40% uh, of mean algebra and gate. After LU decomposition, we'll start with eigenvalues, eigenvectors, and those stuff. Okay. Yes, yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, uh, for uh, gate computer science, uh, I am the only TA available. So, uh, I, I think uh, my commitment to this is for a semester and uh, I meet once in a week, every Friday 6 to 7 p.m. and discuss linear algebra. So, while I meet, I will try to cover the entire syllabus of linear algebra for gate. Okay. After me, I, I don't know if somebody else will follow up. That I'm not very sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye.